Okay, here we go. We're All wasting right. video. Go. I don't even know how to start this out. Hello, folks. Tonight we're going to have another What's Neat This Week podcast with Ken Patterson and Chris Palomares helping edit the video this evening. Tonight we've got Dirk Reynolds with us. I've got Daniel Coombs, Mike Buddy, and Jeff Meyer. And tonight we're going to talk about a lot of modeling subjects. I think Chris has got an itinerary ready to go for us this evening. Well, actually, we're going to respond to one of our watchers this last podcast. Um, I'm going down to him right now. And he was asking about urban modeling. And Ken, I know you had some experience with urban modeling and the Midwest Valley modular layout. Um, I know Jeff is kind of heavy hitter on, on the weathering side of things. And this, this is kind of like an end all take all. Let's take whatever we can think of and just places where we can go um, to reference these things and just kind of get people, you know, thinking the right things about where to start, where to go and you know places to resources that they have online so mm -hmm. urban modeling i kind of see is sort of like a three or two, three tier sort of thing uh we're going to start off with the streets right good ways to model streets second part we're going to talk about the the buildings and the third part we're going to talk about detailing weathering street lights stuff like that so let's open it up with streets who has something to add about that well, I want to say in one of Ken's What's Needs, I think it was September 2016, where he uh, weathered a whole entire roads and basically redoing the roads on his layout. He kind of showed some tips and tricks on using a, what was it, mason jar, alcohol, and India ink, and it's just to create the tar effect of patches on the road and with your original Sharpie, um, and then just a bit of paint, and uh, you'd have a really weathered road. Cool. What was that material called that came in that container? That was patching cement. That was yeah. patching cement? Yeah, I think uh, DAP, yeah, product of DAP. DAP made it. It comes in a gallon bucket for about 19 bucks. And a gallon, a gallon will do a lot of layout, a lot of space. That'll you know, work for street trackage too, which I think yeah. is another thing you, you really need in an urban layout. It's one right. of my favorite things. I'll tell you what, we built a city on the Midwest Valley Modelers layout, and because that was a modular layout, uh, measurements, perfection of measurements was so important. Now what am I saying? That cement patch mix, when you use it for roads, it gives you a nice crown, it gives you the ability to have a nice road and still a little unevenness that looks natural. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing city buildings, everything's got to fit. Right. Everything yeah. is plastic angles of exact measurements. And my, my experience with that was using plexiglass as street road type material because then you could cut it to the streets width, make your sidewalks the width and height that you needed so that the building's foundations would then fit snug inside that sidewalk square area that you've got. And it, you could do it with forms using the patch cement mix, no doubt. I think it would take longer. It's, it, it would be much cheaper to use a cement mix than plexiglass because unless you're getting scrap, you're going to spend a lot of money on plex. Right. Well, here's, here's a thought that actually Dave Davis kind of gave to me. I'm going to give you a plug. He's kind of sitting behind the camera sitting this one out. But yeah. he, he, put in, he put a bug in my ear about this, and I thought it was a great idea. Um, what if you get some of these high-resolution satellite images and print them out mm -hmm. yeah. right onto uh, you know stiff cardstock-type material, Unreal. and then you don't have to worry about trying to weather it you know, yeah. grain for grain and get all this stuff because right. there's all, inevitably tire tracks. And to do like tire tracks in HO, I think that would present a, quite a, a challenge, especially in a big area. Um, the technology is right now, you can get a drone mm -hmm. and start taking panorama shots of like some of the city streets and just replicate it one for one, scale it down. You don't have to worry about trying to decal and stripe it. You just right. print it out and put it down, kind of hit the ground running, Man. so to speak, you know. Boy, digital photography has really changed a lot in the hobby. I, Amazing. I know, and when, when it came along, it's like I did not want to convert Me from either. slides to digital. I did not convert until yeah. 2007. Right. That was the cut point. But if you look at KenPatterson.com, and I'm not pitching the website, Chris told me I can't pitch on the show and I'm not going to, <laughs> but if you did look at KenPatterson.com and forget about the video section, look at the photos. Yeah. 
Right. Those are all the photos that were slides. Right. So pre-2007 is on my website. Now, if you want to see post-2007, you know, current stuff, you got to go on my Facebook page. Right. But right. the fact is, it's amazing. Oh, we don't need it. We don't need it. We don't need why right. the slides are perfect. Why? Right. And at the yeah. time, I remember Kalmbach had that $21,000 digital camera set up in the booth. And this was going back 15 years now. And it was Canon or something. I don't even know who manufactured it. But right now, it probably only shot like a half a meg file. Uh, the point is, it was very <laughs> pixelated. But at the time, it was the new technology. Right. Right. And digitally, to go straight from the camera to the computer for Kalmbach for editing, oh, I can imagine. That's like us getting the new video program this week right. for video editing. It's like, oh, my God, can you save save time? Saving I mean, time is always good. There's other projects to be had, you know? Definitely. So, boy, I can just keep going on that. But, but yeah, the satellite photography is a great idea for the streets. Yeah, you know, and it's all available. I mean, we can go to Google right. now and pretty much pick any street corner and like exactly pull it off and see see if we can find a high resolution of it. Yeah, and if it isn't, I mean, drones are out there where we can right. start stitching photos yeah. together. I think the the technology is coming to the point where uh, we will have to do a little bit less of that. You know, going mm -hmm. around like street running. Right. Yeah, let's get out the dab. Right. You know, because you just can't print track. Yeah. Yet. Right. <laughs> yeah, so, that's the key. But, you know, there was something that, uh, on your Fremo modules, Mike. Yeah. You had some foundations without a building. And there's not a whole lot of um, models representing that, that you can, mm -hmm. you know, purchase as yeah. an aftermarket type right. of thing. Well, what's your angle on that? How, how did you come well, about I, that? Well, I had a, a siding that was abandoned on this uh, Fremo module, and I wanted to put a building in there and I, I had a piece of scrap wood that fit pretty good for a triangular shaped building and then I just went from there I added a tile floor and then about three or four rows of bricks yeah. around the edge and then I got I put some wall studs and pipes sticking up and I pretty pretty much detailed it as much as I could and it attracted a lot of attention and it really wasn't a building it was the remains of a building and uh, you modeled so. South St. Louis yeah you modeled South St. Louis the two families, the four families, flats. the yeah. flats. You captured it. Yeah. You captured yeah. the handrails going up, the hanging baskets, the front porches, the sidewalks, the unevenness. And it wasn't just uh, the unevenness of the sidewalk. It's like where you had this tree, and you could tell the roots of the tree made that sidewalk buckle up. Well, you yeah. just captured it, man. Well, yeah, it's amazing. I appreciate it. It's amazing. You've but, got a uh, very good eye. Jeff's got some pretty good scenery too. Some. Uh, didn't you do a, a scene with a house and a car in front of it and everything? Or am I thinking of Andy West? Off? I think you're thinking of Andy West. Off. Yeah, that was his leg. Did a real but nice yeah, it was kind of similar to yours. Yeah. With the steps going yeah. up from the street. Yep. and yeah. yeah. I like it, Jeff, I always when you have come by and show off your freight cars, man. It's yeah. so cool. Yeah. 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 Um, so going into the second part of it, you know, we, we, we have different ways of building, you know, the, the asphalt, the, you know, the surrounding <clears throat> stuff. So let's talk about how how you can you've actually done buildings on that that uh, that modular layout because I'll you had high rise you know, I'm buildings. I'm thinking about it. I see it in my head right now. I wish you guys could see the pictures in my mind. <laughs> well, I have them I going right now. On I, the well, the, I got to tell you what. The first I'm gonna I'm gonna sidetrack here. Sidebar. Okay. The reason the reason that the Midwest Valley modelers layout got developed like. It was from October to December back in 80, 88, I think, 89, mm -hmm. when I came up with the concept. And what launched that was a cornfield. Right. Once I had the, mid, the farmland scenery figured out where I could create soybean fields and cornfields, mm -hmm. then we were off to the races. Once that developed, then the second module to get built was the city. Okay. And that's when... Um, you know, you're going through the Wathers catalog and you're looking at all of your options. You're going through the old Magnus and Urethane kits, looking at what you can kit bash. And once you start studying photographs of real cities, and I'm, I mean, what year are you modeling? At the time, I was going for that, night, that turn of the century, 19 up to 28 architecture. Right. Where you had the beautiful fronts, the, uh, you know, just these gorgeous city classic buildings. This is a good example of what I'm talking about. Yeah. And we got to the point where, first of all, I would sit there and, like, three feet of street you'd sit there and add it up in your head and you just spent seven hundred dollars because you've got the umbrella tables for the restaurants yeah, yeah. and you've got the interiors and all the buildings and it just blows my mind how fast add the city lighting 
Right. Well, we got to the point of casting buildings, and I got this in writing from a couple of manufacturers. Design Preservation was one, and um, our friend Jim over at City Classics was another one, where he gave me permission to actually cast his buildings, and I was making nine and ten story mm -hmm. castings, build an original from his kits. Once right. you built the first wall, cast it in the resin, rubber mold resin, so you got a big rubber mold, and I got those in the garage. I wish I would have brought one down here. And that was something we got really big into, so that we could build as high as the sky as you wanted, building-wise, and it was amazing. And then we got to the point of doing bay windows and really converting the kits, right. tricking them out, ornating them, doing full interior, doing full lighting. Doing a city is so much fun, but I figured it out in my head. It was something like $350 per cubic foot, and you had to figure wow. it not just on length and width, but when you're doing a city, you're going up. And the higher you go up, the more money you're spending. Every story of the building's got to right. have the lights in it, the floors. Right. It's A city will break your bank. But when you stand there and you look at it lit, even even a novice or a person that doesn't know anything about this hobby, when they see something like that, yeah. it is just right. it's amazing. something everybody can relate it's, to. Yeah, the yeah, everybody knows what a building looks like. So building cities is cool, I must say. Yes, I got I, agree. To, I want to give credit to Vic Smith. We met Vic yes. Smith about 15 or 20 years ago. I can't even remember now. This is, not, this is going back. Look at the covers on the wall. Figure that out. Probably <laughs> 1999, somewhere in there. And Vic came over here, and he was doing castings. And he had taken various types of structures, a lot of Magnuson kits, and made them into tall buildings. And then I was also hanging out with John Heitzman over at American Model Builders. And when we did the 1998 Wathers cover uh, catalog, that had a lot of John Heitzman's plexiglass architectural skyscrapers in it that they designed with their lasers. Yeah. He did the Chrysler building. We had an Indonesian model, which was a reject because of color. So this is a $70,000. He's like, here, use that in the shot. And we put that in there. It was a magnificent looking condo building. Yeah. But all the different ways of plexiglass to urethane to castings to just taking plastic kits, there is nothing more fun than building a city. I mean, it'll immerse you. Right. Well, you know, if you think about the, the fair use of these things, if you're not building these things, taking another manufacturer's kit and selling it, you know, taking those molding parts and, you know, selling them. But if you're building them to scale up for your own usage, right. that's right. fine. That's fair use. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're good there. So, yeah. Um, what about roofs? I mean, that that's something that that is most often kind of, you know, right. forgotten about. I mean, sandpaper. Sandpaper. I've used sandpaper. I tried the paper, glue, sprinkle the sand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, paint the sand. Uh, tar paper. Mm hmm. Use that. You no, know, I like your idea of the satellite photos for the streets. You could do that with yeah. roofs. You too. know, that's a good, good point too. And you too. could just, you know, do something around the edges to protect it, or or whatever. Add add some sand. There's yeah. nothing better than going up into a tall building right. in a city, right? And shooting photos out the window. If you know a lawyer or someone that's on the 27th or in New York, you're probably on the hundredth floor. I don't know how that works, but you you look outside at the roofs, yeah, and the, the thing that immediately jumps out at you are a couple things: a garden swing pools, air conditioners, and a lot of masking tape. And what do I yeah. mean by that? Roofs are just this flat roll material mm -hmm. coated with the tar, and a lot of them are a white. You see so many white right. roofs because right. they're trying to reflect the sun. Right. So once you start looking at that, it's not too bad to take masking tape, roll it out, spray it black, and then highlight the seams with high gloss yes. to recreate the tar effect of where it's been sealed. Mm -hmm. And then go from there. Everything on the roof is going to rust on and bleed onto the masking <laughs> right. tape. Right. Uh, masking tape's a cheap way to go. It really is. Yeah. Another yeah. thing that works kind of good is, of course, tissue. Okay. Right. Well, you know, going back to what Mike was saying, I mean, shoot, we could also get that drone to go up and start snapping photographs right. of you know, really high buildings that you just yeah. wouldn't be able to see down on or right. or get it without keystoning. You we, know, we need yeah. a drone. We need another drone pilot. Yeah, we need. Uh, we haven't drone had any drone. We haven't. Had, I have not had drone footage on the show in a while. Well, John yeah. Deetson needs to come down here. John was down here for yeah, the show. He He's a great guy. Isn't he? he is. Yeah. He's Thank you, John. Too. John's the one who supplied us with a lot of the uh, video that we had on the What's right. Neat show back in 2016. 
I will never forget that opening. I don't know what month it was. Daniel, what month was the opening where the Canadian oh, Nationals um, come at you into the scene? These Canadian have, that is And then the drone pans up. I mean, it is just a <laughs> studio shot, nope. but it's real. Okay, to yeah. answer that, November 2016. November 2016. Wow. Was when you any first time I need to know what's in any What's Neat video, Daniel knows, and I ask him, and he helps. That's awesome. Because I can't remember. Because I do remember that opening shot where you just introduced to uh, your viewers saying, okay, this is going to be a segment on what's neat, modeling yeah. ideas from above. That was the title that of was it. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. basically, John would fly his drone around, I think some former well, Grand Trunk Western lines up to where he lives in Michigan and catching some of the right. uh, scenes. And to what Ken said, it also kind of looks like a model. Because when you're looking at it, you yes, try to, it does. if you're the guy that likes to like model the prototype, Every detail is there, then you can take that drone footage and look and say, okay, yep. this building has to be this high, or you know, this color has to be on this street, and then these locomotives will be here. You know, yeah, no, it's a good, it's, there's so yeah. much you can talk about. Yeah, I mean, that could be like a modeling segment in itself, you yeah. know, it's like what. Well, Modeling but, uses. It. This is crazy. This is not a podcast. It's so weird to get used to these cameras looking at us. I know. <laughs> Mike, really Mike has, Mike's trying to. Where, where do I look? Yeah. I don't know. I don't want but, to look at the cameras, guys. No, something I wanted to mention about the roof detail, though. I, I like the older brick buildings, like from the, the 20s and 30s, but a lot of the, the roofs of those have almost like a separate little building on top of it, like for right. maybe elevator equipment or something. Yeah. Or a roof access with a you know little uh, slanted thing with a door in it, and you know there's all kinds of uh, details like that that you can put onto older buildings, which in their, in an urban environment that's you're making me want to build a common. city. Cities oh, are I know. so I love expensive. It. Yeah, <laughs> they are. I, I'd love to. I got to find a new supplier for the resins. I really do. Yeah. The guy that we got the supplier that supplied us 15 years well, ago, he's in the Gorilla Glue now. You know, this is the thing about this podcast is we can involve everybody watching right, right now. What do you guys use for yeah. resins? If there's anyone out there doing resin casting, or if what are you using now other than resin casting? Are you using like some sort of uh, you know other substrate? So 3D l print. L l yeah, that 3D, 3D print. print. That's another when way you're, do. when yeah, you're yeah, doing buildings. When you're doing buildings, casting multi-story buildings, you're do you're dealing with resin castings that are a foot to foot and a half in diameter, square, and it takes a lot of resin. So you want to buy yeah, it, it by the gallon. And I used to get it by the gallon. And the the techs at the place where I purchased this product <laughs> from, they were they were all chemists, and they would ask me, Mr. Patterson, how long before you want it to set up? Do you want it to be two minutes? Mm. A minute 30 seconds we can even make it 45 seconds or we can make it five minutes and so I told him two minutes and I, yeah. I tried there and I worked my way up until I felt comfortable how long it took to fill the casting right and put a piece of glass over the top of it to flatten it and it came out to two minutes and and it was wonderful to the point where you could take a cup of this material a, a Dixie cup and fill it with the resin look at your watch and when it got to one minute 58 seconds make your pour let it pour onto the table and it would instantly freeze right at two minutes mm -hmm. with the cup in it with the cup yeah in it. so right. you let go of the cup you got a puddle <laughs> on the table you've got your, your your meniscus pour and then the cup hanging in air it was amazing Art. how the material works so well yeah, right and and to this day the castings are still good they have not warped yeah so uh, so the it, the longevity of the product's good so well he mentioned the city and then he mentioned interiors and that's one of the reasons I came over here is to learn how to do things. And I remember that one you showed me, and it was making the interior out of plexiglass. And it would pull right out the top. And you could just take your building and set it right over it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, hmm. and so you're in there. So the building you got rid of, now you can do all your work. And there was a lot of work to do because yeah. now you're dealing yeah. with painting the colors of the interior or the building yeah. convincingly to the correct color of how they would be painted. Now you're carpeting, now your desks, now your wallpapering, right. and you're lighting the building, and you're putting people in it, and file cabinets. You can get buried. You can spend a year on one building if you're working just Very weekends. Much so, yeah. You, you know, I'm under the premise kind of like Dirk, before we started recording, it was just like, well, let's think up a, an easier way to do that. I'm in the presence of Photoshop. Let's let's take like... Oh, you could print it in, yeah, yeah, just print it out on yeah. foam core. You know, start putting oh, it in there. You know, when we did the Midwest Valley Modelers layout, that was the internet wasn't there. Yeah, yet. right. We didn't have right. the internet. Well, well you, Gore hadn't invented it yet. Well, that's the whole thing about that first podcast. It's like, what would that layout be now? Yeah. If if we had those things, if we could do it all over again, right? Right. You know, 
I mean, I, if, if I could do some of my old Fremo modules all over again, if, if we could do some of these city scenes in the Midwest Valley Modelers layout all over again. Some of that I am. Yes. Yeah. You know, you remember what you did, and then you go, ooh, I got 3D printing now. I yeah. got I got printing off the computer. I've got all the, yeah. you know, and I've gotten to the, I do a lot of reproduction and then make a decal sheet or, you know, I need a picture on the wall or whatever, and I've gotten pretty good. I just did a Casey's general store for the right. prototype yeah. show. Yeah, that turned and, out great. And I had to, you know, do these measurements, and I'm getting pretty good on your measurement bars, mm -hmm. you know, that are on your on your page, you know, like that. And then <laughs> I, uh, I'm getting pretty good on measuring that out. Okay, for the camera, it's like this, <laughs> and you know, but measuring out and no, so you don't waste because you got to print test pages. Right. And I'm, you know, before I was going through two or three sheets of paper. Yeah, that's true. You know, right. getting does this look right? You know, whatever, and then hit it with the best. Now, have I got it? Yes. Then you can use it. And then what type of paper you know, print it out? Yeah. Well, I mean, let's scale this up to the to the third phase. Let's start talking about you know some of the other stuff that goes along with this, the the detail, the weathering, the lights. Um, Jeff, you have a lot of experience with uh, with the weathering and a lot of detail experience. Mostly in What's the your, uh, mostly in the freight cars, but I mean, obviously, if you're talking modern urban era, you don't have to look yeah. at how much to see graffiti. Right. Unfortunately, yeah. especially no. here in St. Louis, no. so, no. <laughs> it's just one of those things you get a lot of people bash. And I'm not a fan really that much of graffiti, yeah. but if you're going to model yeah. contemporary, right. it's part of life. I'm sorry, you got to yep. do it. If not, yep. it's fantasy because you look around; it's right. everywhere. Right. Well, let, let, let's also just say that you know these are our opinions on this. I mean, this, this right. can be a real hot topic, oh, and there's yeah. no real wrong answer, right. and there's no real right answer. Anytime to it. it's brought up anywhere, right? There's, 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 there's controversy. Right. Yeah. So That's I'm true. no fan, but if you're going to say you're modeling today. Yeah, you can't. Prototypically, can, right. yeah. you yeah. can't avoid it. Yeah, okay, true. so when you weather buildings in the city, a lot of it's the same as freight cars because you still got the atmospheric dust mm -hmm. that is the same that settles on everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so what do we do to recreate that effect on freight cars? We give it a first wash of, say, burnt umber or raw sienna. Once you get that wash on there and let it dry, now you're ready to do your final weathering on the freight car, and that's the rust patches. The same thing on buildings. When you're doing buildings, you want that earthly, atmospheric effect of weathering on the building, which is this brownish, grimy color around here. I guess it's based on what kind of pollution you had and what era you're modeling, because during the coal years, I'm sure you had a lot of black on a black wash on a lot of uh, right. brick. Mm -hmm. Um, mortar joints. But what we do, we would do is just take a simple artist brush, a one inch brush, and dip it in a real wet wash oil paint on a, on a tile and just give the entire building a wash of this. Yeah. And then you go back and you do the individual rust streaks around the fire ex uh, escapes and the various metal things that would be leaching down the side of the brickwork. So I got to tell you, the weathering of buildings, other than you don't do the bottom freight truck weathering on a building, it's pretty much a wash. It really yeah. is a grimy wash. The rain streaking everything down. The same yeah. concept, like you said, outside of a building. Right. As Gary Christian would say, the science of weathering. Yeah. Like right. you said, it's going to be a lot of time, it's the rain that's washing the stuff down. Right. Plus, wash. honestly, the wash accents a lot of the detail, right. especially wash. on the trim work on a, on a, on a, um, stone color cement color type of a building that's got that facade on it yeah when you hit that with that a uh, wash it just really brings out the detail and it pops yeah mm -hmm. some of it's just it's adding the shadow and the depth to it you know it doesn't have that flat toy like look to it anymore i like it i like how it comes out and it looks good in sunlight and it looks good inside under normal light i'm a big proponent of paint sometimes i, I think that you know in, in the in the lack of surface detail as far as like having actual relief on on you know rivets and things like that you can make up for it with paint so uh, especially in in urban modeling i think uh if you're doing like some of the big billboards and things like that those inevitably will fade there will be rust streaks that'll drip down you know mm -hmm. how long depending on how long it's been out there right dumpsters the same thing you know we we, we weathered a dumpster just like a box car in my mind you know it just sure. pop marks of rust and right all that stuff so some of the details too and you're talking when you're talking about roads but it ties into details especially like in a city it amazes me another thing i was talking with gary christian about 
is all like the signs and things right. sticking on the ground. You yeah. can't go, you can't drive down a street in a city or even anywhere and go 100 feet and there's a sign or something sticking right. out of the ground Tell somewhere. Way zone, and if you, yeah, exactly. Well, no you always street noticed. cleaning days. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No Mikey, parking. Yeah. Mikey stuff. showed all the stuff like newspaper yeah. boxes and fire hydrants. And I think that's something books, a lot of people depending miss on out on. It's a lot of people right. you see they don't, but if like I right. said, Drive through any downtown they just area drive and right just, past you can't it. They don't go, see it yep. like us modelers. There's just something. We would go by the everywhere. lifelike signs, and mm-hmm. you know, yep. weather them and put them on the layout. And then we uh-huh. we met Mike, and Mike showed us how to do signs. <laughs> I'm like, why do your signs look so good, Mike? <laughs> well, I took a photograph of a real sign, and I had the developer uh-huh. process yep. it at, at you know no, Walgreens. I just kept st- taking pictures farther and farther away. Oh, until you the right size. And it came out. Okay. You know, what, I spent a lot of money. What was the reasonable distance? Yeah. Right. What was the distance you found? Well, it, it looked typically. great. It looked convincing. I, it was probably about 30 feet for really? HO, but it, then I yeah. had one for uh, 125th scale, too, because I did right. license plates for my my car models. Oh, uh, yes. But, uh, yeah, photo reduction is great. It's a lot easier to do nowadays, I guess. Or yeah. sure is. The computer. Yeah. 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 Chris could figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll give you a percentage, and you could just take it to the developer yeah. and just have it done. Yeah, you know, right. <laughs> I want this at a you know a five by yeah. seven. You know, okay. Um, so I I think to wrap it up, lighting nowadays. You know, I mean, the, there's been a lot of changes with like LED lighting yes. versus like grain of wheat bulbs and trying to stick. You know, how many grain of wheat bulbs in like a you know a building to try to get get the right illumination out of it uh what is everybody's thoughts on, on lighting now where do, where do, where would you recommend someone to start um i would say well now because with technology and leds the woodland scenics company they came up with the just plug so it's basically mm-hmm. all plug and play material so even a beginner because i'm sure the old school lighting way was you had to be an electrical mind to say okay this wire has got to go solder into this terminal right. and you got to try to configure the lights on yourself and it could be frustrating because you have you know you'd spend so many hours on it and if you were to plug it in and not know what you were doing and it would i don't know do something Blow out then you got to start over yeah. again mm-hmm. and it's yeah. really frustrating do do, but wire yeah. direct or in series yeah right yeah. there's yeah. so many choices and but remember that Wooden Scenic yep. just makes it so easy because they have different styles of lights and the power pack, I think it's maybe 18 volts of filtered uh, current. I think it's converted from AC to mm-hmm. filtered yeah. DC of uh, 3 volts per LED in the street lights and with their electrical hubs that they have to where you can plug in each set of lights, right. it gives it an even glow of the uh, light and you can also adjust the brightness. So if oh. you just want to make, I don't know, let's say a night scene and you got to turn up the lights all the way or if you need something with less light then you can dim it down uh, wow. with these. That's now on the sound. Midwest Valley we use Christmas tree lights so I don't even know if you can get right. Can you even get Christmas tree light LED Christmas tree. Well I don't know how that works yeah. but on the Midwest Valley we bought those lights. We put a three in a series one two three 12 volts they were the right brightness to not burn the buildings down and make the cardboard and the plexiglass right. too hot inside because some of these buildings would have 36 light bulbs in them three on each floor um, they got warm. They did get oh, pretty I warm. Bet. <laughs> they did. It was kind of yeah. neat, though. Boy, they were fast. Yeah. I remember building the very first, because, you know, you're a little guy, and you're, okay, I want a night scene. I want to see all those lights. And I remember buying all those little Bachman lights, you know, you put on yeah. there. And yeah. They were all light bulbs. And all of a sudden, I, what, what's burning? You know, and I looked over, and those lights had actually started to melt. They got so hot. Yeah. You know? Wow. So how great is it now to have right. an LED LEDs. that doesn't do that? And supposedly yeah. they'll last longer too. Right. You don't have to replace them. Well, right. I think that was kind of like the death knell for some of these buildings is trying to pull out like one of those filament bulbs. Yeah. You know? Right. right. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, it gets scary when you got like a, a whole lighting fixture built around yeah. the wires of right. some of those things and then right. you're trying to like pull off some of the details. And yeah. Right now, like Daniel said, the thing we got is that Woodland Scenic system. Right. I mean, other than a walk through the Wathers catalog and start searching the internet, I honestly, at this point, have not lit a building with LEDs other than that Woodland Scenic system, which I took some pretty neat photographs of. You can see that in one of the What's Neat, Daniel, what, What's Neat, I don't know what <laughs> month that, I don't know what month that ran in. Okay, yeah. But there's a video we made on What's Neat on how to do those Woodland Scenic lights. If you've never seen it, check that yeah, it looks out. looks really Now, simple. I haven't taken any photographs of that, but I, March boy, of 2017. I got some pretty neat photos. Right. 
Though. March, okay. It's called Audit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, am I allowed to plug my pictures I'm selling? Uh, I, I'd say um, you're I overdue. Okay. Yeah. So where are they? Um, fineartamerica.com is the name of the website. This is something where I signed up for it, where you can I can now sell some of the best photography, some of the nicer photos that I've created over the years, where you can actually frame them, have them hung up in your home. And this outfit's out of Chicago, uh -huh. and you index my name into their website, and you'll find 25 photographs currently that I have available, some of the really cool shots that we've done that look very, very artsy and realistic. You can have them made to any size print you want, on any type of medium, like canvas material. Right. Then they'll go into any kind of picture frame you want, if you want a frame or mat, various colors, there's thousands of choices. And the website will show you what the final product looks like as you go through the choices. Plus you got coffee cups, towels, all kinds of things, peripherals, where you can have pictures put on them. I might get a coffee cup. I know one of the gentlemen here uh, purchased uh, one of the pictures, so I can't wait to see what the quality is when he, Thomas Heil picked up one of those photographs, and I can't wait to see it. Oh, great. Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm also going to give a shout out to, to a couple friends of mine that are set up over, they're doing a Fremo setup out in the Santa Barbara Fairgrounds. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to Tim, Jeff, uh, Harry, Janik, that they all been blowing me up, show, showing me some really cool photos and stuff. So. Um, guys, thanks a lot for keeping me in on that. Uh, that's been really cool. Yeah, so Janik sent me a video, actually Harry did, of what they've been working on and uh, a, a lady that actually finished a module. And mm. it looks pretty good. It's, it's a YouTube link. I'm going to drop that in onto the chat here for anyone that's interested in checking that out. So, okay. Awesome. Hmm. One thing we didn't get to is vehicles, which is really important for well, the, might be that's, you know, whole that's, that's, that's a whole yeah, yeah, no, other exactly. cast. So we'll have yeah. to do that the next time. Yeah, vehicles are, are, are yeah. yeah. Bring so, some examples. Yeah, yeah. well, you know, I'll, I'll tell, let, let's extend this out to our viewers. Mike brings up a good point. Vehicles can be a whole, you know, I mean, there's three prints, all kinds of, yeah. all yeah. Yeah. Everything. of stuff. Everything. Let, let, let's get you guys to start thinking about, you know, some of the vehicles, some of the, the eight years and things that you're interested in, and maybe Mike can weigh in on that and kind of give some pointers yes. and places to start because Mike. that is, you know, one of your areas of expertise and we could all really benefit yeah. from that. All right. Thank Put you. it in the comments section so we can yeah, right? get it wrote, wrote down. Wrote down. <laughs> get it wrote down and, and, you know, we'll try to address right. what we can. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it fun hanging out on Saturday night? We got to yep. run a train. We got to run some trains tonight. <laughs> that sounds great. Let's run some trains. Thank you guys for watching. Yeah. Um, we'll see you at a train show. So we'll, we'll see you at a train show. If not, we'll see you in another week. Yep.